What is Nindoru? Okay. Uh, Nindoru is a, is a Gendai or modern interpretation of the Koru or old school, or again, the ancient styles of uh, Okinawan and Japanese martial arts. Uh, again, uh, Nindoru is broken up into nine major uh, sub styles or categories uh, in relationship to various styles that uh, operate under the umbrella of Nindoru. Nindoru was uh, founded by uh, or Sensei Carlos Febres in the late 1970s, uh, and he had studied uh, various martial arts disciplines and was very intrigued by uh, ninjutsu and became a student of ninjutsu uh, through various uh, sensei and uh, followed the uh, various kodu traditions as well as gendai traditions of ninjutsu as well as other martial arts to formulate what we now know as nindoru. Uh, what does nindoru mean? Uh, nin is from the Japanese term uh, for endurance, perseverance, tolerance, uh, it also teaches one to be calm and patient. The actual character, the Japanese kanji for nin that I wear on my gi, uh, nin is the Japanese character for sword or blade above the character for heart. And it's to show that even though there is a blade above my heart, uh, I will endure, I will persevere through the adversity that I'm dealing with, and uh, I will remain calm and patient in the face of that adversity. Do is the way or path. Uh, again, the, uh, the, the journey, the path that you choose, the way that uh, you make something that is a, uh, in martial arts, a jutsu into a do, going from an art to a true way of life. And uh, ru is a style or school of thought. And Nindaru is an interesting amalgamation in relationship to that. Again, Nin, as we mentioned before, uh, the Chinese character Yan uh, is also utilized the, the terminology for that same character. Uh, and then uh, Do, uh, Nin Do, many people think of Ninjutsu. Uh, after World War II, many of the Jutsu or combat arts were transitioned over to ways of life many of the kodu traditions were no longer applicable in modern times. Uh, the samurai caste had been outlawed, you could no longer carry swords in public. So a lot of those elements that were kodu, or old school thoughts and styles and traditions, really didn't have practical application in today's modern world. So many of those arts, jujitsu became judo. Uh, again, uh, kenjutsu became kendo. So it was just a natural evolution that the ninjutsu element of our style become nindo, from an art to a way of life. And then ru, uh, many of the Okinawan traditions, uh, ishin ru, shorin ru, uh, chito ru, uh, all these the different Okinawan and Japanese styles that have a direct reference to a, a style of school of thought. So in respect to the Okinawan elements of uh, the Nindo tradition, uh, we use the term Ru, or style of school of thought. So hence, Nin, Do, Ru, a style that embraces uh, the Okinawan as well as Japanese traditions in a modern interpretation. I am the, uh, the Kancho, or division head, for the Kobu Jutsu section of Nindo Ru. Uh, again, the uh, Kobu Jutsu uh, division is literally that, ko meaning old or ancient, bu of course meaning martial, and jutsu meaning art, as I previously stated. Uh, this is a direct reference to the ancient martial arts, or more appropriately, the study of uh, ancient weaponry, uh, whether it come from the Okinawan or the Japanese tradition. And uh, again, because the Okinawans were also influenced by the Chinese, we also embrace and uh, look at the historical significance of many of the Chinese traditions of weaponry as well. And uh, it's been a great journey uh, training with uh, Sensei Fabrez, who has encouraged me to really research and study and learn about the various Kobu Jutsu and then later Okinawan Kobu Do traditions. And it's, it's been a joy working with various people from various styles of uh, Okinawan Karate and Japanese martial arts and looking at embracing their understandings 
of the various traditional kata that are out there for various weaponry. Uh, whether it be the, the five traditional major weapons of Okinawan weaponry, the bow staff, the tonfa, the uh, nunchaku, the uh, sai, or the uh, nichogamo double kama. Yeah. And also some of the rarer, obscure Chinese influence Okinawan weaponry and some of the Japanese weaponry as well. That really gives one a greater understanding of the occupational weaponry used by the various uh, workers in Okinawa, whether they were from the fishing industry, the farming or agricultural industry, and seeing how they transitioned those indigenous tools and made them into weapons for practical application in self-defense. Uh, of course, there are also many uh, natural indigenous military weapons that were obviously used by the military on the battlefield and whatnot that have been incorporated into those traditions as well. So it really is a fascinating study, and as I see uh, various interpretations from various Ru of many of the traditional Okinawan and Japanese uh, uh, Kobudo and Kobujutsu Kata. It really is interesting to see their mindset and the reason and rationale behind what they do. And also be able to, to give the student a diversified understanding into why those particular traditions do those particular Katas in that fashion. And also looking on the three major levels of uh, application in regards to those ancient weapons. Ah, okay, the nine divisions. Yes, there are nine divisions, major divisions, in Nindoru. And uh, actually, presently, one of them is, is in the process of being reoriented. Uh, originally, we had uh, Ninjutsu, of course, uh, Kobujutsu, as I mentioned previously, I'm the Kancho of that division. Uh, jujitsu, also the art of uh, tanto jutsu or tanto do, uh, also the art of uh, our sword division, which is uh, it's really a conglomeration regarding yai jutsu and ken jutsu, and then the application relationship to cutting an object bato do. Uh, then we also have uh, a temi, a temi do. And that also embraces elements of uh, a kempo and karate do and, and the, the striking arts. Uh, the, the tai, uh, uh, some people would also embrace that in relationship to uh, the taijutsu or body arts. Uh, from there, we also have the uh, one particular division now, like I said, we're in process of reorienting, which is the tenkaido, which basically were, we jokingly call them in, uh, uh, joviously call, jovially call them in Nindoru, uh, the hunters that would be used during testing. They, these are the people who, who will evaluate the students along with the sensei, uh, whether they act as ukes or, or assisting them through the various obstacle courses they utilize in ninjutsu. They have their multiple purposes in the auspices of Nindoru. Uh, of course, uh, you know, those are uh, some of the major categories. Um, the, uh, the ninth category, and it is very intriguing when we look at the various arts, is uh, the art of uh, Taiho Jutsu, which is a, a direct uh, division in correlation with law enforcement, whether they be uh, military or LEOs, law enforcement officers, or correction officers. Uh, anyone in that particular field, uh, their particular orientation of martial arts have to be geared in direct correlation to their occupation. Uh, there are obviously certain things that certain law enforcement officers uh, are legally bound to avoid doing. Uh, law enforcement officers are more prone to utilize contact manipulation or, the, or elements of the jujitsu arts uh, to lock, trap, and control opponents rather than punch or strike them. Uh, also, the use of their various gear, handcuffs, uh, again, their, their sidearm, their, the, the nightstick, uh, which many people would utilize in relationship to uh, in Japanese tradition of tanbo. But the key ingredient is that, that particular division is geared directly toward law enforcement officers.